our, our lesson today is entitled God's Covenant with Israel. And it comes from Exodus 19 chapter verses 16 through 25. In fact, we'll use uh, the whole chapter of Exodus 19 in uh, our study. This is Sunday School Lesson, October 8, 2017, and my name is Tony Miller. Uh, the aim of our lesson is to evaluate the ways that uh, the ways Israelites consecrated themselves to receive the law uh, from a holy God, just and powerful uh, God, to aspire to live lives benefiting God's uh, obedience uh, as, as God's obedient servants and to engage in worship practices reflecting our reverence for God. Amen. Next slide. So as I do with uh, all lessons, I try to give you definitions uh, that are germane to this to this text and um, uh, and hopefully they'll give us some clarity and give us some color and texture to our lesson so that we would have a better understanding when we encounter these words in our in our learning. So the first word is Moses, uh, the Old Testament Hebrew prophet uh, who delivered the Israelites from uh, Egyptian slavery under Pharaoh's rule. His name is derived from the Hebrew root meaning to take out since he was uh, as a baby. He was taken out of the water by Pharaoh's daughter. Uh, we find that in Exodus 2. Moses was uh, the primary leader and legislator during the Hebrew time. Hebrews time in the wilderness and God gave Moses the Ten Commandments as well. Uh, the, the graphic obviously shows that Moses is, uh, is, uh, is there when they cross the Red Sea. Next slide. Uh, them or uh, it's uh, the word is them as it's uh, in our text but it, it's God's chosen people in the Hebrew Bible the term Israelites are the children of Israel uh, all refers to the same uh, subject uh, refers to the direct des the direct descendants of any of the sons of the patriarch Jacob uh, or to the descendants of the people who are called Israel uh, and to a worshiper of God of Israel of the God of Israel, Yahweh. Next slide. Covenant. So our whole uh, lesson, our series of lessons have all been about this whole concept of covenant. The term covenant is a Latin, uh, uh, has a Latin origin, uh, convener, uh, meaning to coming together. It uh, presupposes the two or more parties who come together to make a contract, agreeing on promises, stipulations, privileges, and responsibilities. Uh, God makes this covenant with uh, Abraham, Abram uh, at the time, and uh, God said to Abram that, uh, that he gave them this prophecy that was going to happen. They'll be in conjunction with this, this promise that he told them that know for certain your descendants will be strangers in a foreign country, and they will be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years. He gave them this, prom this prophecy, and Abraham sees the future uh, that is not uh, very pretty. The seven uh, full prophecy uh, of the nation of Israel that you will be strangers in a, another country and you will be slaves in Egypt and you'll be oppressed for 400 years. Next slide. Uh, Mount Sinai uh, is a place that's uh, in, in our lesson today. Uh, Mount Sinai is a mountain where God talks with Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments, uh, which is the law. The mountain is often paired uh, with Mount Horeb. Scholars believe that Horeb is the mountain ridge and Mount Sinai is a mountain summit on that ridge. So the graphic here kind of puts them in perspective as they pass the Red Sea, they pass through this Mount, uh, Mount Sinai. Next slide. Lord, uh, our Lord God Almighty. It's, uh, it's mentioned a lot in this whole chapter 19. This, uh, oh, uh, Lord, the primary reason for the use of Lord, uh, capital L-O-R-D, in place of God's Hebrew name, is to follow the, tr the traditions of the Israelites and not pronouncing or spelling out God's name. And so when God's uh, Hebrew name, W-H, uh, I mean Y-H-W-H, is used in the Old Testament, English translations usually use Lord, L-O-R-D, in caps or small caps. Also, since uh, ancient he uh, Hebrew did not use vowels, in uh, its written form is not entirely entirely clear how God's name should be spelled or I'll pronounce even it should it could be Yahweh or Jehovah or Yah uh, uh, Yah Yahweh or something else uh, but again this word Lord is in our text 
Next slide. Uh, the Shekinah glory. Now, also, Shekinah glory is not uh, in, in our text, but this whole concept of, of God's presence. Although God is omniscient, he has chosen to manifest his presence in certain locations at certain times within history. This physical manifestation of God has come to be called the Shekinah. The Shekinah glory is the visible manifestation or presence of God. It is a majestic presence or manifestation of God, which is which he descends and dwells among men. Uh, as we see uh, in the graphic I have beside in the tabernacle, his Shekinah glory dwells with men in the in the wilderness. And whenever the visible God becomes visible, and whenever the omniscience of God is localized, this is the Shekinah glory. And that's, uh, we also have these uh, Piafnis or sometimes those Shekinah, Shekinah but this is uh, the powerful manifestation of God. And that's what we'll see in this text today. Next slide. So that ends our, 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 our dictionary words. And uh, I, I wanna give you the setting of our lesson today that, uh, that, that God has chose this man, Abraham or Abram, Abraham. And, uh, and again, that we have come past the the the, the flood and uh, and and now the, the sinful God judged sinful man and and uh, and 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 man were still sinning and there's a tower of Babel and then as a passing of time God sin was still present in the world that that God calls out this this man Abraham from the sinful world and 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 God makes. Uh, um, and God made promises to him. He made promises uh, that he was going to have a seed and he makes this promise to him. Uh, he makes a covenant with him and God, all of God's promises are fulfilled because God is not a man that he should lie. God fulfilled everything they said. And, 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 and this, 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 these descendants of this one, Abraham, they, they, uh, uh through Jacob, they went into, uh, Egypt, uh, under Joseph, who was the son of Jacob. And, uh, and 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 he was the most power, one of the most powerful men in the world at that time, and and they went into captivity. Once that the Pharaoh uh, that was that knew Joseph, now that he died and the new Pharaoh came in, that he didn't know them, uh, he didn't know Jacob, Joseph. So they ultimately became into captivity, and 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 uh, and and they made it very difficult for God's people and God judged Egypt uh, and that Pharaoh. And he judged them with plagues, uh, giving, giving, uh, and uh, giving them the desire to want uh, to allow the people to leave uh, Egypt, God's people, and God uh, used man, this man Moses, who was instrumental in their exit from Egypt. And there are these plagues that uh, that, that that they had. There were miraculous uh, uh, events that God uh, did upon e Egypt, in, and ending with the um, the. Um, the blood being splattered and uh, and and all in there, and then they left through this Red Sea, and uh, and they left through the Red Sea in a miraculous uh, event, uh, being chased by 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 the Egyptians, and ultimately they were swallowed up in the Red Sea as God had, uh, uh, prevented them from continuing to ch to pursue His people, and they ended up in the wilderness, and ultimately they will end up in a promised land. And God provide uh, provisions for them daily, and uh, this man Moses, who was their leader, that uh, that he communed with God uh, often uh, on behalf of this people, and that brings us to where we are today in this lesson. Next slide. So this lesson is about a covenant, and uh, and uh, and it's about uh, a covenant we'll share at the end. It's it's really about a covenant with uh, God's people. That's um, the, the, the Israelites, the, the, uh, uh, God's chosen people. And as God makes promises for them and the God's promises that I will be your God and you will be my people. And, um, and I, I'm, I'm going to end this lesson with, uh, uh, with God's covenant with us because God is a covenant God. And, and our lessons uh, that we have in these whole series is about these covenants. Next slide. So. Our, our, our lesson uh, goes uh, begins in um, verse twenty. I mean, sixteen uh, through twenty-five. Uh, but it's uh, quite impossible for me to teach you a lesson where um, I'm missing some two-thirds of the text. Uh, so my my object my goal is to give you the first fifteen uh, verses. I think that adds a lot of uh, clarity to uh, that the final the final two-thirds of this chapter. 
and I and I think that you'll you'll, you'll enjoy the uh, understanding that we get out of this uh, the, this uh, beginning uh, two thirds of this chapter nineteen. So background Exodus nineteen verses one through fifteen, and again we'll start with verses one through three. So in the third month, and again we're this uh, lesson. I'm going to uh, use it out of the Amplified, uh, like I've done a few times before. There's no doctrine in here. This is more of a, a c information and clar clarification. So uh, I feel comfortable using uh, the uh, a more modern translation for us. And so, in the third month after the children of Israel had the the uh, had left the land of Egypt, uh, the very same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. And when they moved uh, from uh, Rapidin, um, uh, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and they camped there. And Israel camped uh, at the base of the mountain of Sinai. Uh, and Moses went up uh, to God on the mountain, which again, that's Mount, that's Mount Sinai. And the Lord called uh, to him from the mountain saying, Say, uh, a saying, say this to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites. That's uh, our beginning of this uh, chapter 19. Next slide. So hidden. Uh, that's a location. That's a place that I just had in, uh, in, the, in the verses before. So after uh, Exodus, after they left the, uh, uh, the Exodus, Repidim was one of the uh, Bible places where the Israelites camped prior to their arrival uh, at Mount Sinai. The difficulties encountered at Repidim, uh, at least uh, one of which was the direct result of their lack of faith. And when they ran out of water, rather than trusting in God, who had been displaying one miracle after another, come on, now they left the... The, the the Red Sea, the parting of the Red Sea, which was miraculous, and the and 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 the 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 the, the uh, chariots that pursued them being swallowed up, and 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 on and on, God made miracle after miracle, but but they uh, they chose not to believe God. Um, they they threatened to to actually stone Moses, and not long after they were attacked by the Amalekites. But again, the Lord delivered them. And we'll see this uh, in the graphic uh, next is Rapidin. And you'll see that it's uh, near Mount Sinai on that Sinai pen Peninsula. Next slide. Uh, more, back more background. Um, Exodus uh, chapter uh, 19, verse 4. So, uh, verse 4. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I carried you on eagle's wings. And brought you to myself. And, and I underline this brought you to myself because it's important to this whole lesson. And it's important to the closing of this lesson as well. That that God, again, that he He brought them out of Egypt. That he brought them himself that uh, out of Egypt. Let's go to the commentary that I have below. Uh, in a high expression of the wonderfulness, tender, the wonderful tenderness God showed for them. It notes great speed. God not only came up on the wing, upon the wing for their deliverance, but he hastened them out as it were upon the wing. A, a, uh, also that he did it with great ease and with strength as well as the swiftness of an eagle, that they that faint, uh, that faint not, nor are weary, are said to mount up with the wings of eagle. That's in Isaiah 40, 31, especially. It notes God's particular care with them and affection to them. Even Egypt was the nest which this young ones were formed as an embryo of a nation. And uh, when by the increase of their numbers, which is almost 3 million, they grew to some maturity and they were carried out of that nest by Almighty God and he brought them out himself. And he brought them out miraculously and with grace and power like the eagle's wings. Next slide. Uh, background again, Exodus uh, 19 verses 5 and 6. Uh, and now, therefore, if you in fact obey my voice and keep my covenant, uh, this is that covenant that we are speaking about in this, uh, in this text, that it, this is the covenant, that agreement. And when, then, so if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant. Then 
you shall be my own special possession and treasure from among all the people of the world. For all the earth is mine and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation set apart for my purpose. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. That's what God tells Moses to say to these people. There's this if then, if if you do this, that's the hypothesis. If you if you obey my voice and keep my commandments, then you will be a special possession, a treasure among all the people of the world. Everybody in the world will know that you are my people because you have kept my, you've obeyed my voice and kept my commandments. That ultimately will be that law. And you shall be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation set apart for my purpose, that you are going to tell the world about the wonders of almighty God, the one true and living God. That is what they were supposed to done. That is a purpose for God calling out this people, not just so they would have the benefits of being in connection with the one true and living God, but they were to tell the world about the glorious wonders of the amazing one true and living God, the creator of the universe, God Almighty. That was their job. That was what they were supposed to do. Next slide. Again, Exodus 19 verses 7 through 9. And so Moses called for the elders of the people and told them all these words which the Lord commanded him to say, right? And all the people answered together and said, we will do everything that the Lord has spoken, <laughs> right? And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, behold, I will come to you in a thick cloud so that the people will hear when I speak with you and may believe and trust in you forever that they will know they will hear this power and majesty of my voice and presence and you will know that you are the one who speaks for me almighty God powerful majestic and again Moses repeated the words of the people to the Lord that they said that they would uh, they would do everything that the Lord has spoken of them next slide Exodus 19 verses 10 through 15 verse 10 and so the Lord said to Moses go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow this is prepare them for my sacred purpose and have them wash their clothes verse 11 and be ready on the third day third day is important right we know that with christ right the third day he rose because on the third day the lord will come down on the mountain of sinai in a cloud right in the sight of all the people verse 12 and you shall set barriers uh, for the people around the mountain saying beware that you do not go up to the mountain nor touch the border for whoever touches the mountain must be put to death verse 13 no hand shall touch him that is no one shall try to save the guilty person who does cross that barrier but the offender must be stoned or shot through with arrows whether well, man or animal that touched that mountain he shall not live and when the ram horn sounds a long blast, that's what that call to worship, they shall come up to the mountain. Verse 14. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified them for God's sacred purposes. And they washed their clothes. Verse 15. And he said to the people, be prepared, which is part of that's our sub um, our subtext. Uh, be prepared for the third day. So like us be prepared when Christ appears on the third day after the third day when Christ rises do it and and um, uh, and do not even be intimate with the, with your wife that is what he's saying here in verse uh, 10 through 15 next slide 
Again, we're background for um, um, verses 10 through 13, and that's this whole, again, sub sub uh, title is to get ready to meet Almighty God. So uh, again, this is a commentary a bit for you to sanctify the people as, as uh, Job sent and uh, sanctify the sons in Job 1 and 5. Sanctify them, that is to call them off from their worldly business and call them to religious exercise, meditation and prayer that they may receive the law from God's mouth with reverence and devotion. Two things are particularly were prescribed for instances of their preparation. First is a token of cleansing themselves from all the sinful pollutions that they must wash their clothes. Not that God regards our clothes, but while they were washing their clothes, they would have them think of washing their souls by this repentance. It's an exercise that he's trying to get them to understand. It becomes to us to appear in clean clothes when we wait upon the great men. So clean hearts are required for our attendance on the great God when we come to come before God. And secondly, this token of their devotion, devoting themselves entirely to religious exercises upon the, uh, the occasion, they must abstain even from which was lawful sex uh, uh, for these three days with their wives. Next slide. Uh, so this now uh, we've gotten uh, our our setting and we've gotten our background text and now we are able to enter into our Sunday school lesson again Exodus uh, chapter 19 and we'll begin with verses 16 and 17 and so it happened on the third day when it was morning that there were thunder and flashing flashes of lightning and a thick cloud was on the mountain and a very loud blast that sounded on the ram's horn that the people who were all in the camp trembled and then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God and they stood and presented themselves at the foot of the mountain and and here uh, Moses God's representative God is uh, uh, brought and Moses has brought these people at the at the, the face of the mountain to meet Almighty God, the creator of the universe, the one true and living God, that they now meet him face to face. Next slide. Uh, Sunday school lesson, Exodus 19, verses 18 through 20. And Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because of the Lord's descended upon it in fire. And the smoke descended like the smoke of the furnace and the whole mountain quaked violently. Verse 19. And it happened as the blast of the ram's horn blew louder. That's our call to worship. And louder. And Moses spake and God answered him with a voice of thunder. God spoke back to Moses representing they know that God knows this man Moses, their redeemer. And the Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain. He called for Moses and Moses, he went up there. Next slide. Sunday school lesson, Exodus 19 verses 21 through 22. And then the Lord spoke to Moses, go down and warn the people so that they do not break through the barriers around the mountain to see the Lord, me. And many of them will perish as a result. Also have the priests who approach, uh, who approach the Lord consecrate, sanctify them apart themselves for my sacred purpose or else the Lord will break forth in judgment against them also and destroy them that he didn't even want those priests who who ultimately will be able to go into the temple into the holy of holies and be able to prepare services for the people and sacrifices he said that they can't even go in to see at this moment god said uh, later in uh, in exodus he says no, uh, no man can see me and live they set up the barriers next slide uh, and here i have uh, no one can see god and live there's a commentary i have for you 
So God tells us that no one has ever seen God. Uh, that's John uh, uh, 1 and 18. Except the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Exodus 33 and 20, God declares that you cannot see my face for no one may see me and live. And we know the story when the Moses asked God to, he wanted to see him and God hit him in the cleft of the rock and he put his hand and he only saw his, his backside, his Shekinah again, right? These scriptures seem to contradict other scriptures which describe various people seeing God. For example, Exodus uh, 33 and 11 describes Moses speaking to God face to face. How can Moses speak with God face to face if no one can see God's face and live? In this instance, the phrase face to face is a figure of speech indicating that they were very close communion in very close communion, communion. God and Moses were speaking to each other as if they were two human beings having a close conversations, metaphorically speaking here. Next slide. Sunday school lesson, Exodus 19 verses 23 through 25. And Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai because uh, Moses said, uh, Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai because you warned us saying, set barriers around the mountain and consecrate it. And then the Lord said to him, go down and come up again, you and Aaron with you. But do not let the priest and the people break through the barriers to come up to the Lord. Or he will break forth in judgment against them and destroy them. And our last verse is, so God went down to the people and told them again. So Moses, I'm sorry. So Moses went down to the people and told them again about God's warning. And that ends our Sunday school lesson text. But we have more to talk about. Next slide. So uh, uh, Almighty God will give his people a new covenant. That's that law that he'll ultimately get God, Moses and Israel at Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb. Uh, so Exodus 19 through 34, we'll see that God prepares Israel for his covenant with them. That's what we've been discussing. And God provides commandments and ordinances, which is a law which, uh, which follows uh, verse uh, chapter 19. And the covenant is established and the Israelites agree to it, but the Israelites violate the covenant and they fall away again and again and over time again and again and again. And Moses acts as an intercessor, a mediator and propitiation and as a substitute. And uh, God yet shows uh, forgiveness, forbearance and instructions uh, are provided uh, to, for them to build a tabernacle and establish this whole priesthood. Uh, and uh, obviously the sacrifices as well and God confirms that he will remain with Israel because he made this promise and the covenant is reestablished next slide so this lesson is again about a covenant uh, the covenant where God makes promises and we uh, have our part to fulfill and and uh, and God has his part he says that uh, I will be your God and you will be my people right next slide and uh we see this uh almighty god also made a covenant with those whosoevers uh that's uh, us the whosoevers for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever that's us believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life right next slide so I'm, I'm giving you, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm rehashing this uh, verse that came out of Exodus 19, verse 5, uh, because it's, uh, this, this is a pattern, and, and this pattern that God gave to the Israelites is the same uh, pattern that he gave to us as, uh, as believers in uh, Jesus Christ, as Christians. And now it's that if then again uh, thing, now therefore, if you in fact obey my voice, and keep my covenant and when jesus says the same thing that he if we we obey uh his 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 covenant and go obey his words uh then we'll have this everlasting life or if we believe that that jesus is the one who said that he was then we have this everlasting life and you will be a special possession 
right? That the world will know that we are Christian because we believe uh, that this one Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Redeemer of all mankind, and we will be a treasure among all the people, right? We will be that, we will be those priests and you will be to me a kingdom of priests. That's who we are going to be, right? We will tell the world about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is our commission. That is what we are. We will be a holy nation set apart for that purpose. And that is what our charge is. And that is what we are as Christians. That is this covenant that we have with God. The covenant that he had with the Israelites is a similar covenant that he has with us. That if, if we do this, if we adhere to this hypothesis, the hypothesis, then we have the conclusion, which is the eternal life right that is the same type of covenant that we have with almighty god uh, through christ that they had through that law next slide the if and then promises and i just want to share a couple of them with you to get this whole flavor there's many of them all throughout scriptures if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and heal their land as in second chronicles 7 and 14 uh, matthew 17 and 20 if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed then you may say to this mountain move from here to there and it shall be removed and nothing 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 shall be impossible to you that's that is a, what we have and that's the the promises that we have by almighty god that that we can ask for anything and if we believe and we have the faith of a mustard seed that that god has given us the charge and authority over that we can have that we can have we can have the the the, the uh uh health and wealth and uh and prosperity and we can have uh eternal life and we can have uh no sickness and we can can lay hands on the sick and they, they can get well and and on and on and on god has promises for us if we believe that if and then if we do our part then god does his part next slide so the new covenant is with uh, the gentiles and the jews that's that those whosoever it's not just the gentiles the jewish folks as well if they chose to to follow this new covenant the new covenant in a nutshell is the gospel of salvation it describes how we have been saved from sin and death so we can live forever in a loving relationship with God through the saving work of Christ. Again, it's like he says that God is going to bring us out, that God brought us out of the world, that he brought us to himself, just like he did with the, the, with the Israelites, that he brought them out of Egypt to himself. And Christ brings us out of the world unto himself as well. And we always keep coming back to the center point of Christ that he is God himself who has offered himself to us. If we want eternal life in God, it must be through Christ. At this core, this new covenant is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a message of salvation by grace through faith. That is why it is important that for us to understand and teach it, right? We are the priests. We are supposed to teach it just like we are. He told the, the Israelites that they were going to be the ones that are going to be the, the priesthood our goal is to do the same thing that is what the great commission and we'll see in a second it is on the basis of our eternal life the new basis is jesus uh, himself and his blood again that washing he told them to consecrate themselves and wash themselves so they could be brought that they could be in the presence of almighty god they went before the mountain to meet almighty god they were washed we are washed in the blood of the lamb and that gives us ability to come and come before a holy God and send the petitions of our heart because of what Jesus' blood does on our behalf. It's washing us and making us worthy to be even in the presence of Almighty God. To enjoy this new covenant, we admit that we can't earn our way into God's presence. We will never be good enough, but instead rely upon His mercy. In summary, the new covenant is the relationship we have with God made possible by the death resurrection death and resurrection of jesus christ a relationship based on faith and grace rather than the works of the law that that's what our covenant is based upon jesus but god himself 
brings us out of the world and God himself washes us with the blood of Jesus and allows us to be able to be have the relationship and our goal is to be priest and to show the world and tell the world about the wonderful uh, Jesus Christ the Redeemer of all mankind next slide we have this great commission and that great commission is go ye therefore make disciples of all nations helping them to learn of me and believe in me and obey my words baptizing them again washing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things everything that I have commanded you and lo I am with you always remaining with you perpetually regardless of the circumstances and on every occasion even into the end of the age and in 1 Peter 2 and 9 that we are this priesthood but you are not like that for you are a chosen people you are a royal priest a holy nation God's own possession as a result you can show others the goodness of God for he calls you out of the darkness into the marvelous and wonderful light that that is our charge that is our goal that we that he just like he told the, just like he had the Israelites he wanted to be a priesthood they can tell the world about almighty God the one true and living God and our goal is the same as to tell about God the son of God the word that became flesh that dwell among us and we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the father that that he is a redeemer of all mankind that that if we we trust and believe in him that we have the relationship restored that was broken back with the sin in the garden with Adam and Eve that, that our that our, our our fractured relationship can be restored because of we we've come face to face to meet almighty God washed in the blood of the lamb Jesus that is an amazing story and that is amazing covenant that we have that is uh, uh, this 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 uh, covenant making God God is a covenant making God God is a covenant making God next slide and that is our Sunday school lesson for this week uh, the lesson was to be ready and we'd be ready by trusting in Jesus and uh, and uh, we, we are we're ready by by uh, the 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 Jewish folks had to be ready but be washed and and ready to come uh, uh, at, at, at Mount Sinai to to see God face to face and uh, and be introduced to Almighty God and our goal is the same but to be ready uh, as we encounter Jesus Christ we 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 become washed in the blood of the Lamb that we can have stand before an Almighty God as sinless covered by the blood of the Lamb that our, our lesson was Israel's covenant, covenant but we also have a covenant because God is a covenant making God so my prayer for you is that something that you heard today strengthens your faith that you learn something worthy of sharing with some other folks and uh, um, that uh, that you enjoy learning about God and, and, and this covenant making uh, that he has with man and, uh, and my prayer is that you are encouraged to learn with us uh, my hope is that you will hit that subscribe button and uh, you will get these lessons automatically as we uh, prepare them each week. And I will leave you with a benediction of the Heavenly Father. Send us out with confidence in your word to tell the world of your saving acts and bring glory to your name in Jesus Christ. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for your time.